Hi guys, welcome back. So today I'm going to be making a travel case for my TENS machine. So if you're not familiar with the TENS machine, it's a little electronic device into which you can plug um, little electrode pads like this. Um, and you place the electrode pads onto your body um, in the area where you're experiencing pain and they um, emit tiny little electric shocks which um, are not painful, but they interfere with the neural pathways um, of your central nervous system that transmit those pain signals up to your brain um, that cause you to actually experience it as the sensation of pain. So it doesn't actually stop the pain, but it stops you from experiencing the pain. I'm going to be making a travel case for this today so that I can take it um, out of my handbag with me when I'm out and about in the days leading up to my period so that when it strikes, I have got pain relief that is actually effective with me immediately. Um, so I usually get really bad menstrual cramps for the first 6 to 12 hours and I have been known to go into meetings at work carrying a hot water bottle um, because the pain is just too much that I can't cope without something um, and over the counter medications and hot water bottles and things have never really been enough to deal with that but this has so it's been an absolute game changer and that is why I'm going to be making a travel case for it today. So before we get started, if you would like to learn more about how to make, mend and grow your way to a big life on a small budget, then make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single video. So my husband first bought my tennis machine for me when I was bed bound pretty much with my chronic illness and I was getting a really stiff neck and stiff back um, from basically be, being unable to move around enough. Um, and this um, really helped with my neck and back. I also then came across adverts for the Livia, which is essentially a shrink it and pink it TENS machine for menstrual cramps. But it got me thinking about um, using my TENS machine for menstrual cramps and it's been an absolute game changer for me. So um, I couldn't recommend it enough as a method of pain relief for menstrual cramps. So these two pads have lasted me over a year and um, that's with use for both um, my stiffness from the chronic illness and for menstrual cramp um, pain relief and um, they are still workable but they are losing their stick so I will show you later on how to keep um, your pads going for as long as possible by cleaning them um, and as, as you can see two pads should last you a year if you're just using them for menstrual cramps at least. So these are not 100% zero waste but considering the amount of um, plastic and foil popper packets of um, ibuprofen and paracetamol that I was taking over the course of a year to deal with those period cramp um, pains, just two little electrode pads is actually probably um, a better source of waste although I don't believe that there's any way of domestically recycling these at the moment. So I have got some scraps of fabric from my stash and a bit of bias binding tape um, which I'm going to be using but the star of the show are these um, clear vinyl bags that I saved from when we bought bed sheets last. So um, a lot of bedding comes in these and this sort of plastic is great for a whole variety of different sewing projects. It allows you to create see-through windows and things. So if you're making pencil cases for children during exams or if you are making little bags to put in your cosmetics on carry-on luggage on aeroplanes um, or situations like that where you need clear um, bags, they're great for that. But also they are really good for making things like um, wet bags for cloth pads and for um, cloth nappies um, and they're also really great for making baby changing mats that are wipe downable and things of that nature um, and I'm going to be using them today to create a sticky surface for me to stick the electrodes on in my case um, and that sticky and peel offable surface means that it stops um, bits of dust or hair or anything else that you might have floating about in your handbag um, from attaching themselves to the sticky electrode and making it um, stop being sticky faster. So first off I'm going to um, cut down the sides to prepare just a straightforward bit of this vinyl plastic to use in my case. Um, 
Okay, so I have just um, put my TENS machine on to the widthways of the piece of vinyl I've got and it's basically a perfect size. So in order to work out the length that I need, I'm going to place my um, actual TENS unit and then I'm going to place my um, electrodes on and I can see that I've got plenty of scope um, within the piece of vinyl that I've got to go with way. So I'm going to make it as long as possible um, just so that I can put in extra um, pads if I want to um, even though I can only actually fit two on my machine at any one time. So the scraps of fabric that I've chosen from my stash are this um, pink polycotton with um, owls on which is really cute and this um, pink polar fleece fabric so I've just got random shaped scraps so I'm just going to work out roughly what I can do with my piece of vinyl and that's going to be a perfect fit so I'm going to cut um, some of this to go um, to the same size as the vinyl and some of this to go to the same size as the vinyl. Now the reason for me using the polar fleece layer is just that it's going to provide a little bit of padding for this because obviously this is um, plastic and if it gets dropped it could it could break it. So I want to give it a little bit of protection as I'm going to be carrying it around with me all the time. Okay so I've got three pieces that are identical sizes that I'm going to make up into a quilt sandwich. I'm not going to turn this inside out because I have got bias binding so I'm just going to have the clear layer polar fleece in the middle and then the um, owl fabric with the um, right side facing down so it's outwards um, and the wrong side facing up towards the polar fleece. I'm then um, going to add another little bit of polar fleece as a pocket on one side which is where my um, TENS machine will fit in. So I'm just going to measure another bit of scrap um, fabric to form a little pocket at this end. So it, it wants to be slightly shorter than the width um, of the um, other three parts um, but it wants to be wide enough that it can go around and come back down on either side and make an actual pocket large enough to fit the machine in. Okay so I've got a nice squared off piece there so one of the tips that I would have for making um, square pieces just by eye um, is just to fold them over and to use one um, side that you've already cut square as a template for the others and then you can even fold them in quarters to make sure that it is actually square and they all line up. I am going to edge this, even though it's polar fleece and it's not going to fray, I think it will make it easier um, to pull the pocket apart if I do actually bind the top of this pocket piece um, before attaching it. And I think I may also actually put a strip going um, down where the pocket joins as well. So I'm going to take the um, short edge um, that's going to form the top of the pocket and I'm going to place the bias binding which I'm going to open up one side of across the top and I'm going to stitch in the ditch which is the little ridge that's left um, where the bias binding was ironed folded. So then if I fold it up over the stitch part and fold it down on the other side then I get a nice straight line on both sides. Now normally I would um, hand stitch this second part but um, I'm not going to bother with this because it's just something for myself and um, so I'm just going to run it through the sewing machine to make that second edge and that is then going to go over um, the fabric here. So the, the raw edges of this I'm not going to bother doing anything with because they are going to be covered by bias binding eventually when the whole thing is um, put together. Okay so I am going to lay my bias binding the wrong way up so that the um, two folds that fold out are facing upwards down the edge that I'm going to um, to do and I'm going to lay my little pocket over and I'm going to stitch straight through all the way down. Now the reason I'm going to do this is because then I'm going to turn the rest over um, so that it is on the outside 
and then I can top stitch a nice straight line across the top and it will look good um, from the outside. I'm going to make sure that my pocket is um, done so that it starts on the bottom edge and that the spare um, gap is at the top. And then going to fold my bias binding back over where I've just been and do a nice straight top stitch. So as you can see here, I've got my quilt sandwich of my three layers. So the wrong side of my owl fabric um, is touching the polar fleece and the polar fleece is touching the vinyl. And then over here, you can see my pocket is a bit shorter than the um, whole height of the um, travel case. And I have um, top stitched the bias binding. So that was the side that it started with. And you can just see um, the stitches coming through from the other side from the top stitch. And then I have top stitched along here to hold that down. So if I peel this back, it will come back to the line where that... Um, initial set of stitches went down um, the height with the bias binding um, before and then here's where I folded it over and folded it over and got a nice straight top stitch line so that's where we are now and the next stage is going to be to um, do bias binding all the way around the outside so I'm not going to start directly on the corner I'm going to start a little bit offset because um, bias binding is more forgiving on the straights than it is on the um, corners so where I want my two edges to meet when I come all the way around is going to be um, part way down an edge so I'm actually going to use the fact that I've got this um, set of stitching for the pocket inside as the edge that I start from um, so that my binding joins at a point that is not going to look lopsided or anything. So I'm going to open out the first fold and lie my bias binding along the edge and I'm just going to stitch in the ditch as I did before all the way around. Just being careful to note where my pocket is when I get to that stage. So when you get to the corners, I tend to keep my needle down and use that corner as the corner where I fold my bias banding back up to so that I get a nice straight edge and a nice um, diagonal corner fold. Okay, so now I have done my bias binding all the way around the outside and I've reinforced the bottom of my pocket. So my TENS machine will fit into the little pocket at this end and my um, sticky electrodes can stick onto the exposed vinyl like that and then I can wrap the case around. So what I need to finish this now is for a way of fastening this around um, the TENS machine and the electrodes. So I have a tiny ribbon here which is one of the ones that you get in blouses on the shoulders to hold them on the coat hanger um, and I always cut them out because I don't actually need them I don't think to hold them on the coat hanger usually. Some, some I leave them on but most of the time I cut them out and put them in my sewing stash and they're great for things like this. So I'm just literally going to fold it in half and stitch it to the um, end furthest away from the pocket and I'm just going to run several lines of stitches through it there on the inner side. So to finish um, these off I am going to put some nail varnish on the ends of these. So first I will cut them on a diagonal because that helps to prevent fraying. So I'm going to show you now how I clean um, my old electrodes before sticking them onto um, the plastic that I'm going to keep them on to store them. So I've got an old toothbrush here. I always keep an old toothbrush around the house for cleaning jobs um, and this one is several years old now and I'm just going to um, use it with some water and I'm going to then um, brush and massage the um, surface of the electrode here. 
and what this does is it um, gets all of the surface area of the electrode um, to be moistened but it also helps to clean off all of the um, skin and dust and hair and things that have got into um, this sticky surface and are preventing it from adhering and massaging it allows you to get to all of the um, surface area of it because the surface area of something like this is not actually flat at all it's all the porous little bumps and furrows and things you absolutely do not want to wipe these with a cloth because all the um, fibers of the cloth will end up sticking to it so you want to let this air dry once you've finished cleaning it as well so that's nice and clean now and if you compare it to this one you can see that this one has got um, lots of um, little bits of, of um, dust and skin and hair on it and that's going to happen to your electrodes and um, you can help to stop that from happening by making sure that you wipe the area of skin before applying the electrode um, which is fine if you're at home but in this situation where you're carrying it around with you on the go and you're probably at work or something um, when you come on your period and you want to um, use this that's not always possible so making sure that you keep it clean after um, you're using it is the next best thing that you can do and as you can see this one has actually started to dry out pretty quickly so the difference between it when it's sopping wet and when it has started to dry out here is quite um, quick but you want to leave them out to make sure that they um, dry fully before you attach them back onto your carry case so here you can see the finished carry case. I've got the little pocket at the end where my TENS machine can slot inside. And it's padded on both sides with the polar fleece. And then I've got my clear plastic um, vinyl area where I can stick my electrodes on. And then at this end I've got two ribbons. So as I roll this over it will enclose the tense machine in even more padding um, and will roll the electrodes and I can take one ribbon one way, one ribbon the other way and then finally tie them in a bow where they join and this little pouch can now sit in my handbag ready and waiting for when I need to use it. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video making a TENS machine case and if you have please remember to give it a big thumbs up, it really does help. Um, if you would like any different sewing tutorial videos or if you've got any questions about this one then please do leave them in the comments section below. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!